Hi, and welcome back to Jet Admin. Today, I'm going to show you how to connect a REST API to your Jet app. So we're gonna do this in a couple parts. First, I'll talk a little bit about what a REST API is and how it can be beneficial. Then, I'll show how you can connect a REST API to Jet quickly, and then we'll look at it a bit more in depth. That is to say, how to create a new collection, how to configure requests, and how to set up things like pagination, uh, sorting, and filtering. When I go over how to set up requests, I'll also talk about how to use the API Builder. For example, how to use inputs to pass values in your requests, uh, and how to transform your data using the Visual Transformer or the JavaScript Transformer. Lastly, we'll look at some other functionalities, like syncing your API to Jet tables, which gives you the ability to use things like SQL queries for navigating your data. So what is a REST API? Well, essentially, a REST API is something that allows different systems to communicate and share data. RESTful APIs use HTTP requests to perform operations on resources. Typically, these are standard HTTP methods like get, put, post, and delete uh, that allow you to perform the basic CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete on different data resources. An important aspect of REST APIs is that they're stateless, which means that all of the information needed for the request is held within that request. Because of that, they don't rely on previous requests, which allows for greater scalability and simplifies caching. REST APIs are widely used in modern web applications, and they provide a standardized way for different systems to communicate and share data. So today for my example, I'm going to use Stripe. Jet Admin already has a Stripe integration, so it is much simpler than this to connect your Stripe to Jet. However, I'm still going to use Stripe as an example today. Before we go any further, you should open up your API docs and log into any account that you might need information from. So the first thing to do is to add a resource. I'm looking at my app builder page, and if I hover over the resources icon in the menu on the left, I can click add resource. Here I can actually see the Stripe integration in the list, but for today's example, I'm going to click on REST API. So to connect my REST API, I need to enter a couple things here. Uh, I need to give it a name. I also need to enter the base URL. This can be found in your API docs. In this case for Stripe, it's right here, and I'll just copy and paste it in. Now I'll click on advanced settings to set up authentication. You should look in your API docs to find the appropriate way to authenticate, but for Stripe, in this example, uh, the appropriate way is to use an API key, which I will send as a header, and then I will write authorization and put my bearer token in here. For this video, I'm going to be working with the example data that Stripe has in its API docs, but you would enter the bearer token that you could find in your Stripe account. So now I'm going to click on add resource, and I can see that this data is not my Stripe data. Jet has filled in example data because my requests are not set up correctly. I could set this up in two ways. One way would be to reconfigure each one of these requests, and the other would be to add a new collection and configure each request from scratch. I'm gonna choose the second way because I think it's simpler and also because it's the same way that you would add other collections from the same API. So in the menu on the left, I can see that there's a plus button. I'll click on this to add a new collection. I need to give it a name, and now I need to configure the first HTTP request. I need to add the proper URL to the base URL. In this case, I'm going to be using the collection customers. So if I go to that part of the docs, I can see that for my get request, I want to have this URL, which I'll just copy and paste uh, onto the base URL, which is already here in the API builder. This is a good time to the pagination. If I look at my Stripe docs, I'll see that Stripe has cursor pagination, not page pagination. Uh, so I will click on pagination here choose the correct option, cursor, and then I can see that I need to specify the query parameters limit, ending before, and starting after. So I'll enter each one of these keys, limit, ending before, and starting after, uh, into the query params here. And now if I click on value, I can choose my cursor values. So per page limit, uh, cursor next, and cursor previous. If I look in the docs, I can see that there are parameters that I can add to this HTTP request but I'm not going to in this case, it's not necessary to retrieve all the records. However, we will look at including parameters and using inputs in just a second. Now I'll hit send request to test this, and I get this undefined object. I can make the data readable in two ways. Uh, the first is with the visual transformer, and the second is with the JavaScript transformer. For the visual transformer, I will just click here, and then I will choose data. 
I also have the ability to choose a specific element or field from that element, but I'm trying to retrieve all of my records, so I don't want to do that. Great, and now you can see that my data is displayed properly in a readable way. I can also use JavaScript transformation. Here, I'm just going to have it return the data, but you can also use functions or anything else you might want to add to get it to return the data that you want specifically. So now that I can see my records list in the data editor, I want to point out that the data editor is not totally functional. For the data editor to be functional, you need to have these requests set up. However, once they are, you can edit and manage and do whatever you want with your data right from this screen. So now our get records list request is set up correctly, and we need to set up the other ones as well. So I'll click on get one record, and up here I'll click on HTTP, and here's my API builder. Before we configure this request, let's look at inputs. So if I click here, I can see all of my inputs for this request. These are going to be keys and test values. So for get one record, my only input is going to be ID, and I want to enter a test value for it, uh, the ID of one of my customers in my customers table. It's important to use a test value when adding inputs so that you can make sure that your request is working properly. Technically, you don't need to test your request to save it, but it is a good idea to do so to make sure everything is correct. If I look here at the docs, I can see that the customer ID should go directly in the URL. It should not be passed as a parameter. Let's do that incorrectly on purpose so that you can see how the API builder lets you debug a request. So here I will add the URL to the base URL. And now I will add a query parameter of ID and then I'll choose my ID value from my inputs. Surprise, surprise, it didn't work. I now have an error. So what do I do with that? If you have an error in your request, you should click on request here, it lets you see exactly what was sent and exactly what was received by the HTTP request. You can also see any errors in full. I can see here that it says unknown parameter, meaning I gave it a parameter that it does not recognize that is not used for that kind of request. And we know that to be the case. We already know that this is not how you get a single record from Stripe's API. So I will delete this parameter and I will put my input value directly in the URL at the top of the API builder. Now, if I hit send request, it works correctly. So now that's set up, and now that I'm back in the data editor, I can choose a different ID and get the information about a different customer. Next is to set up my create record request. The process for all of these is going to be very similar. I click on the request, I click on the HTTP button to access the API builder, and then I look in my docs to make sure that my request type and my URL are correct. Uh, and I also check what parameters I can add, what are required or optional and things like that. So for my create record request, I'm going to use a post method as it says in the docs, and I'm going to add this URL to the base URL. So now is when I would set up all of the inputs that will be sent as parameters, but I'm only gonna set up three of them, which is to say name, email, and phone. However, the process would be the same for other parameters as well. One thing I will note here is that some parameters might be, for example, a dictionary, and even if the parameter is optional, if you choose to use it, there might be required parameters within that parameter. So for example, if you have a shipping parameter with the address within that shipping parameter, which can be optional, you can have required other uh, parameters. I'm gonna click on inputs and enter the keys name, email, and phone. I'm gonna change the phone data type to number because I want to send it as a number and I will enter some test values in here. Now that I have the input set up, I want to put them into the query parameters. So again, I will enter the keys and I will put the dynamic values in the value field. Here you can also update your test value if you would like. I've entered my query parameters correctly. I have the correct URL. Uh, let's go ahead and hit send request to test it. So now my create record request is working correctly and I will just hit save. Next is update record. Uh, again, this is the same process as before, but I want to point something out here that is kind of interesting. If I go to my docs, I can see that the update record request should use a post method, uh, but with the customer ID in the URL. So here I just want to point out that we're going to have inputs in the URL and also in the query parameters. But we'll set those up in the same way that we did before. So I'll go to inputs, I will enter in ID, uh, but also email, name, and phone, and whatever others you might want to add, and I will give them test values. Now I will enter the keys and the dynamic values for name, email, and phone, but I want to enter in my ID value right into the URL at the top of the API builder. 
I'll hit send request and perfect. Now it's working fine. I have updated the details for this particular customer. And then the last request that needs to be set up is delete. So same thing as before, we'll click on the request, then the HTTP button to open up the API builder. Then I'll look at my docs to make sure I have the correct method and URL. In this case, it's going to be similar to the get one record or to the update uh, record request where I'm gonna have my, my ID input directly in that URL. So I'll just add the input in and add a test value and hit send request. I can see that the request was successful. So I'll just hit save, perfect. So now let's go back to the data editor. The data editor is now working correctly. I can click on a cell and update its value. I can add a new record. I can delete a record. I can work with the data however I want now that all of the different requests are set up. Now that we've got one collection set up, if I want to add other ones, I would go through the same process where I'll click on the plus button to add a collection and then configure each HTTP request. Let's go back to our get records list request for a second so that we can look at how sorting works. Stripe's API doesn't actually let you do sorting in this way, but if I did want to set that up, I would do the following. Uh, I click on sorting and here I have a list of my fields and I want to choose the ones that I want to be able to sort by. Once I've done that, I will specify the query params sort by and sort order. And now I'll choose the sorting values that are now available in this menu. One last thing I want to talk about today is how to sync with jet tables. Syncing with jet tables has a lot of great advantages. It allows you to use SQL queries to navigate your data. And it also allows you to use this data with data blending and combine it and blend it with other data resources you have on your Jet app. To set that up, I will click here and I will choose sync with Jet tables. Now I'll just wait a minute or two. And once that's synced, I have a lot more flexibility for working with my data. For example, I can go up here and change the data type for my fields. Uh, this can be very useful for working with your data in other components in your app later. And it also allows me to, again, use SQL queries to navigate this data or to blend it and combine it with data from other resources. On the whole, keeping all of your data synced up with Jet being your single source of truth. Lastly, let's just take a look at a blank app page where I'll drag and drop a table in and I can see that my resource that I set up with REST API is available here for use in my app. So that's it for today. I hope you now understand a little bit more about how to connect a REST API to your Jet app. And if you do have any more questions, check out our documentation. I've included a link below, or feel free to write us in our support chat. Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you next time.